Chapter 14 of Among the Meadow People This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Among the Meadow People by Clara Dillingham Pearson Chapter 14 The Tree Frog's Story In all the meadow there was nobody who could tell such interesting stories as the old tree frog. Even the garter snake, who had been there the longest, and the old cricket, who had lived in the farmyard, could tell no such exciting tales as the tree frog. All the wonderful things of which he told had happened before he came to the meadow, and while he was still a young frog. None of his friends had known him then, but he was an honest fellow, and they were sure that everything he told was true. Besides, they must be true, for how could a body ever think out such remarkable tales from his own head? When he first came to his home by the elm tree, he was very thin, and looked as though he had been sick. The katydids who stayed near said that he croaked in his sleep, and that, you know, is not what well and happy frogs should do. One day, when many of the meadow people were gathered around him, he told them his story. When I was a little fellow, he said, I was strong and well, and could leap farther than any other frog of my size. I was hatched in the pond beyond the farmhouse, and ate my way from the egg to the water outside like any other frog. Perhaps I ought to say, like any other tadpole, for of course I began life as a tadpole. I played and ate with my brothers and sisters, and little dreamed what trouble was in store for me when I grew up. We were all in a hurry to be frogs, and often talked of what we would do and how far we would travel when we were grown. Oh, how happy we were then! I remember the day when my hind legs began to grow, and how the other tadpoles crowded around me in the water and swam close to me to feel the two little bunches that were to be legs. My forelegs did not grow until later, and these bunches came just in front of my tail. Your tail? cried a puzzled young cricket. Why, you haven't a tail. I did have when I was a tadpole, said the tree frog. I had a beautiful, wiggly little tail with which to swim through the waters of the pond, but as my legs grew larger and stronger, my tail grew littler and weaker, until there wasn't any tail left. By the time my tail was gone, I had four good legs and could breathe through my nose and my skin. The knobs on the ends of my toes were sticky, so that I could climb a tree, and then I was ready to start on my travels. Some of the other frogs started with me, but they stopped along the way, and at last I was alone. I was a bold young fellow, and when I saw a great white thing among the trees up yonder, I made up my mind to see what it was. There was a great red thing in the yard beside it, but I liked the white one better. I hopped along as fast as I could, for I did not then know enough to be afraid. I got close up to them both and saw strange big creatures going in and out of the red thing. The barn, as I afterward found it was called. The largest creatures had four legs, and some of them had horns. The smaller creatures had only two legs on which to walk, and two other limbs of some sort with which they lifted and carried things. The queerest thing about it was that the smaller creatures seemed to make the larger ones do whatever they wanted them to. They even made some of them help do their work. You may not believe me, but what I tell you is true. I saw two of the larger ones tied to a great load of dried grass and pulling it into the barn. As you may guess, I stayed there a long time, watching these strange creatures work. Then I went over to the white thing, and that, I found out, was the farmhouse. Here were more of the two-legged creatures, but they were dressed differently from those in the barn. There were some bright-colored flowers near the house, and I crawled in among them. There I rested until sunset and then began my evening song. While I was singing, one of the people from the house came out and found me. She picked me up and carried me inside. Oh, how frightened I was. My heart thumped as though it would burst, and I tried my best to get away from her. She didn't hurt me at all, but she would not let me go. She put me in a very queer prison. At first, when she put me down on a stone in some water, I did not know that I was in prison. I tried to hop away, and bump went my head against something. Yet, when I drew back, I could see no wall there. 
I tried it again and again, and every time I hurt my head. I tell you the truth, my friends, those walls were made of something which one could see through. Wonderful! exclaimed all the meadow people. Wonderful indeed! And at the top, continued the tree frog, was something white over the doorway into my prison. In the bottom were water and a stone, and from the bottom to the top was a ladder. There I had to live for most of the summer. I had enough to eat, but anybody who has been free cannot be happy shut in. I watched my chance, and three times I got out when the little door was not quite closed. Twice I was caught and put back. In the pleasant weather, of course, I went to the top of the ladder, and when it was going to rain I would go down again. Every time that I went up or down, those dreadful creatures would put their faces up close to my prison, and I could hear a roaring sound which meant they were talking and laughing. The last time I got out, I hid near the door of the house, and although they hunted and hunted for me, they didn't find me. After they stopped hunting, the wind blew the door open and I hopped out. You don't say! exclaimed a grasshopper. Yes, I hopped out and scrambled away through the grass as fast as ever I could. You people who have never been in prison cannot think how happy I was. It seemed to me that just stretching my legs was enough to make me wild with joy. Well, I came right here, and you were all kind to me. But for a long time I could not sleep without dreaming that I was back in prison, and I would croak in my sleep at the thought of it. I heard you, cried the katydid, and I wondered what was the matter. Matter enough, said the tree frog. It makes my skin dry to think of it now. And friends, the best way I can ever repay your kindness to me is to tell you to never, 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 never go near the farmhouse. And they all answered, We never will. End of chapter 14